good morning. Welcome to Centro Service Online. You have a couple of minutes before we start the service, so go grab your kids, grab your coffee, and get ready to hear an awesome service. Cheers.
good morning. Welcome to Centro Service Online. You have a couple of minutes before we start the service, so go grab your kids, grab your coffee, and get ready to hear an awesome service. Cheers. Hey, welcome to Central Online. My name is Matthew, and we are so excited for you to be joining us today. We know that having church online is different, and we want to make sure that you are staying connected and engaged with others. So we want you to take this next moment by inviting your friends. Go ahead and take out your phone, think of three people that you know, and invite them to live.centralpeople.com. Why don't you go and take this next minute to do that? Go for it. Hey, welcome back. If you would like somebody to pray for you right now or after service, you can go to live.centralpeople.com and there's a prayer link there that you can click on and we have a team there waiting for you um, and ready to pray for you. And so now we're going to move in our time of worship. So why don't you go ahead and turn up your devices, lean in, and let's worship together. Good morning, Centro. So glad to be with you wherever you are. We invite you to worship with us this morning. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not Alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my turn till I met you. You called my name. Right where you are, 
put your hands in front of you, put your hands above you. Whatever you are, we just invite you to worship. I need a rescue, my sin was heavy. But chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is here.
Welcome back. If you're just now joining us, we want to make sure that you are staying connected to Centro. And the best way to stay connected is by joining a life group. I know we have to stay separated physically, but we can come together online. And you can join the life group by going to centralpeople.com slash groups. Also, we can't forget about our kids. We just recorded our first episode of Central Kids. So if you have kids, go ahead and let them watch that episode at centralpeople.com slash kids. Now, Let's get ready to hear uh, today's message from Pastor Mundy Cano. Let's focus, let's turn off all the distractions, and let's lean in to see what God has for you today. Well, good morning and welcome to Central Online. We have a lot of people that call Central home, and I'm, I'm glad they're all watching this morning. Uh, but if you've never been to Central, or this is the first or second time you're watching, you, uh, we want you to be welcome also. And uh, we'll get through this. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully soon we'll be back in our building. Uh, they just added yesterday another 20 days, another 20 days to this thing. So, uh, but we can get through this. And I was reading my, my Bible this week and I was reading all, all the things Jesus claimed. He claimed to be a uh, God. He came to be, uh, he came to be the one with the Father. He, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father, but through him. And uh, he said one thing that's really interesting. He said, in Luke 19, 10, he says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. And I thought, man, this is, that's exactly what this is all about. This is this thing, this thing that we call church, that we are not meeting in a physical place. We're meeting online. is all about Jesus coming to this planet to save, uh, to seek and save the lost. And... Uh, you know, we we've, things have changed quite quite quickly. Uh, four weeks ago, we never thought we'd be doing church like this. It's 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 pushed us forward into a, a different era for our church, and we're super excited for it. Um, the lockdown, I'm sure, it's uh, crazy for some. You know, some uh, handling your kids all day, helping them with the school. I'm sure that's hectic. We're praying for you. We're believing uh, uh, God for uh, for a miracle. We believe in God for a supernatural intervention, a supernatural intervention into this and this into this pandemic. Uh, um, and so, I wanted to share a passage uh, in uh, Luke chapter ten. It's a story of of the, of the Good Samaritan, and it starts out in Luke chapter ten, verse twenty five. It says, "Behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher." What shall I do? What shall I do to inherit eternal life? So it's an interesting question. First of all, it's a lawyer. He's uh, super educated. In this, in this case, a lawyer is a religious expert, uh, uh, an expert on the religion, and uh, he knew all everything about the Bible. He was an expert, and he was trying to test Jesus. He was trying to test him as a teacher. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? I thought that was interesting. Where he says inherit. It's kind of a weird question because you can't do anything to inherit something. You inherit is a gift. So there he goes. Even the expert had a weird question, right? So let's go on to the next verse. Verse 26 says, and he said to him, this is Jesus says, uh, it, uh, what is written in the law? How do you read it? So Jesus says, okay, uh, I, I wrote the law. I, I know all this. But he goes, I want to give you 
I'll give you a chance to answer it. And so the interesting thing about this, the lawyer had a question for Jesus, but the lawyer, he already knew the answer. He knew what he was going to ask because this is all a test. So he, he summarized the Old Testament, 39 books of the Old Testament. He summarized them, he, and, and there's basically two verses that he could summarize. And he says this in verse 27. He said, he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. That's Deuteronomy 6.5, where Deuteronomy 6.5 talks about loving God your, uh, with, with your mind, your money, with everything you have. Everything you have, you love God. All right? Then he says, and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor and, and your neighbor as yourself. He goes, here's, here's, that's, that's Le- Leviticus 19.18. He says, he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and, with, and your neighbor as yourself. So he's saying, first of all, we got to love God with everything that we have, everything that we have, everything we have to love God. And then the second thing is love your neighbor. And that comes from a passage in Leviticus 19.18. It says, You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself, because I am the Lord. And this is all, this is, you know, we're, we're about entering into uh, the Easter season, right? Next week is, is uh, Easter, and we're going down that path, Holy Week. And, and the guy asked the question to Jesus to test him, and then Jesus, he answered, this, he answered this way, but the thing about it was he answered correctly. Verse 28 says this, And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. Do this, and you live. So he tells him, You did a good job. A good answer. Good answer. But he still, the guy wants to justify himself. Because, you know, he understands he's the lawyer. He's a super smart guy. He wants to prove that he's a smart guy. It's a public question with people all around him wanting to know what's going on. And he says in verse 29, he says, but he, he said, desiring to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? So that's a difficult question, I guess, for him. He's like, well, who's my neighbor? He's trying to trick Jesus again, trying to capture Jesus. But Jesus turns the table on this guy. He, 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 he the, and the neighbor, the neighbor in his mind, this, this lawyer, this Jewish expert of, of uh, this Jewish expert, his, in his mind, the neighbor was other Jews. But Jesus is about to turn this, the, the tables around. And, you know, a lot of us are in the turn the table around uh, t- time right now. Things are, you know, people are wondering about job security and, uh, they're, I mean, I've never, you know, I've never not shaked anyone's hand. It seems so weird. You know, there was not even, before it was fist and then elbow, and now it's six feet away, kind of, they don't even they ignore someone, all right? I, I saw a video where a guy had a big old hula hoop thing around him, six feet, he was walking around on campus, like a college campus. I thought, whoa. And so this parable that Jesus is telling us is, is probably one of the most famous stories in, in, in the history of the world. And he says, he goes, I want, you to, I want you to think about this. He goes, think about this. And Jesus replied to him, he says in verse 30, he says, this is what he says. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, just like 70 miles, like maybe from here to Arlington or something. And, and he says, uh, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him, and he parted, leaving him half naked, half dead, half dead, right? So, uh, all, so here's, the, here's, the, here's the problem, right? He's going down a road. It's a dangerous road. You know, we've all been in the dangerous, you know, uh, situations, right? Uh, I was at a gas station one time. And uh, I had just had a knee operation. I was on my crutches. I was putting gas. And a guy came around the corner and jumped out of nowhere. And I picked up my crutch to hit him. And it was some guy from the church. Hey! He was just trying to scare me. Oh, he did a good job. I almost, I almost clobbered him with my crutch. Right? We've all been there. 
This guy going down this road, a road that many people have gone, uh, 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 the, the, the road to, to down Jericho is... Uh, everyone that in that group that Jesus was talking to had probably had probably had already traveled that road. They knew the situation, how sometimes it can get a little, little dangerous, whatever. Don't go at night or whatever. And these dudes, they beat him, they kicked him, they stripped him, they stripped him naked, they, and then footsteps came. Footsteps. And verse 31 says, And now by chance, a priest was going down the road. And when he saw him, he passed by the other side. He saw him, said, oh, no, the guy, I, I don't know if he's, he might be a, 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 a Jew. He, he, he might be in, my, in part of my, my community. Uh, he might not be, a, his look, his clothes are tattered. Uh, maybe he's an Egyptian. Maybe, I don't know what he is, but since I'm not sure, I'm going to have to cross the street and just maybe ignore him. And in the story here, they talk about two different people. Priests and Levites. And priests who, who were basically, uh, they were all of a, the same tribe, the same tribe. But the, the priest was in charge of, of doing, of, of all the sacrifices. They were, it's kind of a, it's not kind of, it was a prestigious, uh, the society looked up to them. And then the Levite were the priest helpers. They were in charge of doing music. Uh, they would clean up the temple. They would be in charge of security. They would make sure that the right people were in the temple. For example, they would make sure that uh, the Samaritans wouldn't go into the temple. And we'll talk a little bit about Samaritans in a second. But they both had high place in society. And the priests the priest couldn't really go in. I mean, there it, it, it was, it was a lot of um, factors going into going to help this guy. Because if he was dead, uh, he would he would he would he would have touched a, a dead person that would make him unclean. So then he would have to go back to the go back to the city and uh, uh, stand outside the city in the east gate and uh, for five or six days. I can't remember. And he's there for a week a week and then then he'd have to go buy a cow and then sacrifice the cow and then now we're looking at. Now we're looking at cost and time and uh, isolation and uh, quarantine himself. And now he, he is, it's too much, too much risk. So he just said, well, I'm not sure. So it's, it's not technically my duty to make sure. So he, 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 crossed, he went to the other side of the street. Well, the same with the Levite also. We're going to read a little bit about that. But same with the Levite. The Levite had those same rules that he had to follow. He couldn't touch the dead body. He the, he'd had to get uh, he'd be un, he'd be unclean. He had to go to being clean, and he had to go out of the city by by a cow and sacrifice it. Plus, he ran the risk of let's say he sees this is right after the priest goes by, and then the the the, the Levite, which is the lower right, maybe maybe the the assistant to the priest. And he shows up with this, with this man and helps this man. It's basically showing up the priest. Look at, I'm more spiritual than the priest. So now there's a whole other factor there. It's like, it, it, it's, it's, it's complicated. And then, helping your neighbor is a Christian idea. Before then, they, their idea of helping their neighbor was only, only, only helping other Jews. So, okay, so let's keep reading. But the Samaritan, so did I, did I this skip a verse? And like, so likewise, a Levite who came to the place and saw him and passed on the other side too. So two guys, the priest and the Levite. So here we go. Here we go down to verse 34. No, let's, let's go to 33. 1033, I'm sorry. 1033. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Now, okay, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about Samaritan. Samaritan, okay, so uh, the people of God, Israel, uh, the, they had a, a civil war, right, after, after Solomon, their king Solomon had died. And they separated into two kingdoms. And the, and the northern kingdom kept rebelling and rebelling against God, and they got, they had, they were overtaken by the Assyrians, right? 
and they they intermingled and they had they married each other and they had babies and their babies the children of uh, uh, their children were called Samaritans and they worshiped uh, the same god of the bible except they only used the first five five books of the bible and they started kind of bringing other their other religion and kind of mixed their religion together and it, it, it just it just it just it perverted it, per, it perverted the, uh, the, the religion. So the Jews hated the Samaritans, first of all, for mixing, for perverting the religion. Uh, they just hated them, right? And so they said, no, 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 no. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to hang out with them. So when Jesus introduces a Samaritan to the story, he's, he's introducing a, um, the arch enemy, it's, it's like saying, um, it's like saying uh, when a Nazi helps a Jew during World War II, right? Or uh, a KKK member helping an African-American person. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's that, that type of hatred, that type of craziness, right? Some real, real hatred. So this is what he does. Verse 34. And he went to him and bound, uh, bound up his wounds, so he, he fixed them up. Pouring oil and wine, which I think the oil and wine is interesting, because the oil and wine is what the priest and uh, the priest and the Levite used into in the worship service in the temple. But okay, so he uses oil and wine. Then he set him on his animal and brought him into an inn and took care of him. So here's the, here's the, here's the, the the Samaritan, the the hero of the story now, who is the arch enemy of the Jews. Takes this man into the city, which puts himself at risk. Because now he's in an enemy's place, and people, he could very easily have been uh, beaten or uh, you know, whatever, right? Now he, he puts himself his, at, at risk to take this person in. So he sat him on his animal, brought him to, to, uh, and took him in, right? And then and it says here, it says here, verse 36, 35. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, I'll repay you when I come back. So he's like, he, so he's, he's like at least a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks of, of pay. I mean, at least, who knows? It could be just a couple of days. Uh, uh, it's, it's, I, I've read so much about this, about what, what is a denarii equal? Maybe a day's wage, maybe a week's wage. But either way, it's some cash. And he said, if you don't, if you don't uh, have enough, I'll, I'll give you some more when I get back. So he's not, also, he's not just mending him and healing him at that moment. He's looking forward into full rehabilitation. You know what I'm saying? He's not like, I'm just helping him now. I'm helping him, down. I'm helping him get better, get back on his feet. Now, here's a the, here's the, here's the beautiful thing. Verse 36. Which, which of these three do you think proved to be a, a neighbor? To the man who, who fell among the robbers? He said, okay, who, which was, who was a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And, and the lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. He says, the one who showed him mercy. You know what's kind of crazy about this passage? That he can't even say Samaritan. They can't even say that dude, can't even call him what Jesus called him. He called him by some random dude. Oh yeah, that dude that showed mercy. He's the one. He's the one that acted like the neighbor. It was a, good, it was a Samaritan. Now, this famous story... It's called the story of the Good Samaritan. And what happens here? What do we learn? What do we learn? Well, there's an obvious thing, right? That we need to be a Good Samaritan. I mean, that's an obvious lesson there. It's an obvious lesson that we need to be a good Samaritan, that we need to help people in the time of need, that we need to stop and, and, and help people rehabilitate, 
that we need to take time to and, and make an effort to help people, um, help people get better and love people and, and care for them and love them like we, like, uh, like we love God or even like we love our own self. But the, but the story here is an amazing story because Jesus is telling a story about himself. And so in this time, this crazy time that we live in, where, where, where people are, are, are relying on, on the things that they have and the things that they own, and, and maybe they're, they're, they're super attractive or they're very influential, and, and, people, and, and we live in a country that's been blessed, beyond blessed. But the truth is that we're like that man, laying on the side of the road, beaten, kicked, bleeding, naked, and we need a Savior. And Jesus, and Jesus comes from heaven to this planet, just like the Samaritan goes into a place that he is not necessarily wanted or, or, or welcomed or well-received, but he comes here. Why? Because we need a Savior. And in this time of, of craziness, in this time of, 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 of people, of, it, it, it may get a little worse. We have a Savior who loves us enough to come to this planet to rescue us, to take care of us, to love us. That is good news. That is fantastic news. That is news that we need to share with people. That is the news that we need to tell people. We have a Savior that can get us through this. If you're beaten and bruised and, and feel uh, like there's no hope, there is hope because there's one that came, like the Good Samaritan, but the better than the Good Samaritan. His name is Jesus. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. This is a famous passage, a famous passage. That he gave his only son, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Here's a, here's a, here's a million dollar question. The million dollar question is for us. Just like the lawyer asked a million dollar question to Jesus. But what, shall we, what can we do to have eternal life? Believe. Believe. Believe that Jesus came and, 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 and lived a perfect life that we can't live. Died on the cross and carried our sins on the cross with him. And we're going to celebrate that on Good Friday. And, and, and we're going to uh, look to the resurrection. Because death, he physically rose from the dead. And we're going to celebrate that next week. He literally rose from the dead on Easter Sunday. And we receive eternal life, and we have eternal life because of what Jesus did for us. And so if you're new and you ho feel hopeless, you feel like you have no, no uh, way out, there's a way out. And he said it. He says, Jesus said, I'm the way. He said it. And he's saying it here today that he came to this planet to be the good. He's the perfect Samaritan for us. He's the one that came to rescue us. He's the king. He came to be our Lord. And so, so there's a message here. Here's the message. For those of you who have given your life to Jesus and call yourself Christian. Let me tell you this. Those priests and the, that priest and the Levite, they didn't start off. They didn't one day wake up and say, you know what? I'm going to be too good to help people on the side of the road. No. Slowly they went down that journey. Slowly they went down that path of thinking they're better and having, being superior and being religious. And, and they went down that path. And, and the Bible calls it, those people lost their first love. And I want to encourage you that in this time, in this time of crisis, in this time of, 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 of literally people dying, hospital workers seriously worried, it's a time for us to draw close to God. 
It's a time for us to, it's a time for us to go back to him and not lose our first love, but fall in love all over again with our Savior. So you're here listening to this, you're listening there in your living room or wherever, maybe you're maybe you're in your bedroom watching this, I don't know. But you have one or you there's only two people out there really. Those who have already said yes and those who need to say yes. And I'm going to encourage you to say yes. And if you've already said yes, I'm going to encourage you to say yes again. So in this crazy time we're living in, loving our neighbor matters. Loving our neighbor matters, ladies and gentlemen. Loving our, ma- our neighbor matters because it tells people that we are followers of Jesus and it gives God the glory. Our, our, our uh, actions matter. Now, wash your hands. That, that's important. Stay, stay, uh, stay home. That's important. Do the things you need to do. Do the things you need to do. But man, if you've already said yes to Jesus, here's a perfect opportunity to call on your friends and your family and say, you know what? I know you haven't been going to church, but maybe you should come come with me next Sunday. I'm going to send you the link. You watch it, and then I'll call you later, and we'll talk about it. For those of you who are leading a life group, and you have your, your small group, your life group, call all your people, disciple them, take charge of them, and say, I'm, gonna, I'm here to help you. And just zoom them up, man, all the time. Talk to them, pastor them, love them. Let's move forward. Let's do what God has called us to do. It's a crazy time we're living in. But this crazy time, it needs some crazy people to stand up and do what God has called them to do. We can do this. And here you are, man. If you've never made a decision, here's a day. Today's a day for you to make a decision. If you feel alone, if you feel desperate, if you feel full of anxiety, there's one that came to rescue you. If you feel like you've been thrown and discarded on the side of the road, beaten and bruised and left for dead, there's one that brings life. His name is Jesus. He's the Good Samaritan the better Samaritan. So let me take a moment to pray. Oh Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless, bless, bless those people listening, Lord, and watching this. I pray, God, that you would help us draw closer to you and that you would help us be uh, the, the, the light to, the, to, 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 a, to a dark world, that you would help us get, give us words to say to our friends and family that they need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Help us preach the good news, Lord, to them. And Lord, I pray for those people in the room who've never said yes, who've never said yes, I pray in Jesus' name that you, God, right now, will give them the strength to say yes. Right there where you're at. Say yes. Say yes out loud. Whisper it. Just whisper it. Say yes. Yes, Jesus. I believe in you. I need you. I'm the guy broken on the side of the road. I need someone to rescue me. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now. Uh, we have a couple things happening, for sure. We got we'll have a mid, we'll have a, we're gonna start doing Wednesday night uh, service, a Bible study Wednesday night. We'll throw it up there online, and we're gonna do a Good Friday service, and we'll have to get we'll get together and we'll do a special Easter service. And you know what? We're gonna on Good Friday we're gonna celebrate communion. So um, take out your crackers and grape juice or whatever and. And we're going to celebrate uh, communion together as a, as a church family. So uh, stay tuned for all that. I um, also want you to be praying for our missionaries around, around the world that we sponsor. Uh, we, we sponsor multiple missionaries. And uh, all, all the countries that we sponsor, they're all being affected by the same uh, virus. And uh, we want to continue to bless them, continue to take care of them financially. And so, um, and, and then again, if, if you need anything, and we're going to focus on helping people, if you need anything, we're here to help you guys. Just contact, contact us here at the office. Uh, you could um, 
uh, text, I mean, uh, email help at centralpeople.com uh, and we'll be more than happy to see what we got to do. To, we'll do what we got to do to help you out, all right? And then on Thanksgiving, uh, Easter, I'm sorry, on Easter uh, afternoon at 4 p.m., we're going to do another prayer parade. And man, I heard so many powerful testimonies. So not this Sunday, not Palm Sunday, but on um Next Sunday, we're going to do, on Easter Sunday, another prayer prayer uh, parade. And let me read this last verse. It says, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. This is what they were saying. They were saying, Hosanna to him. And that's Hosanna. We're praying, we're, we're saying, yes, Jesus. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. His name is Jesus. Let's say yes to him today. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Money, for that awesome word. Now we all have next steps, and our pastor has given them today. Love your neighbor matters, and we know the best neighbor, Jesus. Also, stay tuned on our social media platforms to see how we're going to host Good Friday service. And don't forget about Easter. And don't forget to invite your friends to Easter. Now we want to thank you again for joining us today. We'll see you next week.